Hi everybody, and it's Daniel with your news cartridge for Monday, August 10th, 2015, and welcome back. First up, we have more news from Gamescom. A Square Enix director from the upcoming Final Fantasy XV game named Hajime Tabata has said that Final Fantasy XV will run at 1080p 30 frames per second on console, and also stating that achieving 60 frames per second may need a high-end gaming, gaming PC. However, work on the PC version will only begin after the console version has been released. And I can't really say that I'm surprised about this because Final Fantasy games have traditionally come out on consoles, although Final Fantasy XI was on, was on PC, Final Fantasy XIII was on PC, FF14 is on PC currently, uh, it would be really nice to see it come out at the same time, but obviously that's not going to happen because they would have already needed to start production on it. There, there's just no way it, we, we, we would not get a good version. So I will st uh, stay tuned and I will let you know about any release dates because nothing has been released. Uh, no release dates have been announced for either the console version or the PC version. Remember in my last episode how I said we were in the heyday of space sims? Well, here's Everspace. Looks to me like a first and third person space fighter simulator, but it also advertises itself as a roguelike game. I really like roguelike games, I really do. I also like space shooters, so sign me up. Sign me and my X-52 up right away. I, I can't wait to go at that with my flight stick. So if you'd like more information on Everspace, you can go check out their Steam Greenlight page, which is down in the description below. They have already been given the go-ahead to make the game according to their page, so expect a release sometime in qu uh, quarter four of 2016. Treyarch, the developers of the new Call of Duty game, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, have announced some of the PC features as well as the PC minimum requirements. Two player split screen, I repeat, two player split screen will be in Call of Duty Black Ops 3. Yay! Oh my goodness, yay! Go tell those uh, Battlefront people how to do this because they don't know how to do it. That, we would really like to see this in Battlefront. But apparently there will also be 100% uh, dedicated servers for ranked games. There will probably still be a client host based servers for, uh, for unranked games, but if you're going to play ranked games all the time, that means your server should be pretty stable. Um, as well as seamless controller support. So if you want to switch back and forth between keyboard and mouse and controller, say there's a vehicle or something, that'll do that on the fly, really easy, probably just like GTA. Uh, there will also feature FOV sliders, Steam trading cards, and more. Go check out the, uh, a link in the description down below for all of the features. But before we go, the minimum specs were, were announced as well. It seems you will only need an i3-530 or an AMD Phenom 2 X4 in order to run this, which is actually pretty old processors. They're about four years old. A, a six gigs of system RAM, a NVIDIA GTX 470 one gigabyte card or, or better, or a Radeon HD 6970 one gigabyte card or better. There's no mention as to the disk space needed, but I, for Call of Duty games lately, they've been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So I'm guessing that you're going to need between 50 and 60 gigabytes of space. Now, relatively speaking, that's pretty low specs. So this should run on a lot of different machines fairly well. So I'm, I'm curious to see how it'll run on a high-end gaming rig. And finally, Frontier Development, the makers of the space exploration simulator Elite Dangerous, have guaranteed that players will be able to land on planets by Christmas. Except there's a catch. It will be part of an expansion called Horizons, and it will cost $59.99 US dollars. Players will use new vehicles called SRVs, or surface roaming vehicles, roving vehicles, pardon me, in order to get around on the planet of, of surface of planet, explore and do uh, various things. Um, the, no real details on what you do on surface of planet yet. My biggest problem with Elite was that I quickly found myself running out of things to do. Bounty hunting, bounty hunting was the most uh, fun thing to do, most interesting thing to do, but it really wasn't all that profitable. You generally spent more in repair and gas than you did in making money. 
the the most the, the the most profitable thing that I found was exploring, and that got pretty repetitive after a pretty short period of time. So I think I finally know what Elite Dangerous is all about. The base game costs fifty nine ninety nine, and then if you want something to do, that'll be another fifty nine ninety nine. And finally, that brings us to tomorrow's game releases. For PC, we have Ali Ali 2, Welcome to Ali World, Beyond Eyes, Hidden Mysteries, Civil War, Illuminaski, Airscape, The Fall of Gravity, and Blaster Shooter Gun Guy. For PlayStation 3, we have X-Blaze, Lost Memories, as well as Goat Simulator. PlayStation 4, we have Everybody's Gone to Rapture, or Everybody's Gone the Rapture, sorry, pardon me, Toy Soldiers War Chest, Gauntlet Slayer Edition, Prototype, Prototype 2, and more Goat Simulator. PlayStation Vita, we have x Blaze Lost Memories. For Xbox One, we have Toy Soldiers War Chest, and Prototype, and Prototype 2. For Wii U, we have Brave Tank Hero, and Nintendo 3DS, we have Garfield Kart, Paddington Adventures in London, and Brave Tank Hero. Thank you very much, everybody. This has been News Cartridge. I am Dandruff. I will see you tomorrow. And just a reminder to everyone to back up your data. But that also reminds me, last person I told that to told me that they didn't know it could go in reverse.